I think to understand how um, decentralized identity can work in this context, it's important that we look at like what's currently happening or what's happened in the past so we can understand why people in this uh, decentralized identity or self-sovereign identity space, as it's also called, are so excited um, about these uh, new technologies and what they could mean. Um, so what we have today is a centralized model where uh, we as users can go on to online services. And uh, when we go there, we effectively need to sign up uh, for these services, often by something like email. Um, and we need to effectively create an account uh, with that service. Um, but when we go to then another online service, we have to go through the same process again, um, create another account with a different service um, and so on and so on. And what the user ends up with at that point is um, a whole bunch of online services, uh, but also a whole bunch of uh, passwords and credentials that they need to kind of manage. And as we're all told for security, uh, these should all be different. So, so that creates a bit of a, a UX, a user experience headache um, and also potentially a security risk as well, because we've got all of these, lots of these different uh, passwords. And probably if we're not using password managers, we're probably using dictionary passwords and, and probably they're the same for all these different accounts. Um, so we then moved to try and solve this uh, UX problem. Uh, we moved to a more federated model. And so that's more typified by a user going to a site where they can actually use um, the credentials they've already created with someone like Google or Facebook or more technical users with something like GitHub, um, where they can log in with um, Facebook or sign on with Google into this different service. That removes some of the, uh, the user experience headache because it's not another set of credentials that they need to manage. But what that does do is it erodes their privacy because um, in giving that um, you know, enabling them to log in with these other services like Google, they are then able, that, that service is then able to see what, what they're doing, uh, what other services are they accessing, when are they accessing them. And so that um, is, is eroding their privacy quite a lot. And of course, like these large companies um, often operate by, um, they make money by effectively knowing more about you and then selling that knowledge to advertisers or giving advertisers access to you uh, based on kind of your preferences and, and how you behave. And so that's a very, very dangerous mix um, when you have companies that are uh, highly motivated um, to, to know more about you and then can monetize that data. And so then we move into the decentralized model and what you would have there is a situation where the user um, signs up with a, a decentralized service. Only they know um, that they've created these credentials. They are not stored centrally anywhere. They're kept with the user, um, typically in a wallet. Um, and then they can use potentially those um, that identity to uh, potentially access other systems, um, all the while they're retaining control and the, the system itself is not. But then also you can start to attach uh, different attestations or what we'd also call claims um, to those identities. Um, and they take the form of something that we call verifiable credentials.